Hello and welcome. Today we're going to be looking at some of the functions of the Digico S21 24 in 12 out small format digital desk. Let's not waste any time and jump straight in. So I'm not going to go into too much detail about the external properties of the desk. Um, as you can clearly see, they're split up into two banks, um, each with a touch screen, multi-purpose pots, um, solo buttons and mutes and they're split into 10 channels each bank um, and then you can see at the the right hand side of the console there's also an extra six multi-purpose pots um, then you've got your master volume for your solo and you have buttons to control your general overview and your spill set and your master fader and buttons to go between scenes for scenes and that's that's practically the exterior of the desk. Okay so let's look at the channel strip. It's laid out as you'd expect to typically see any sort of channel strip so you've got your input and your input gain at the top and then you, under that you have your high pass filter, your dynamic section which can consists of a compressor and a gate and then your auxiliary section and then the output of your channel. Something that's important to note on this desk is that if you press the input section it brings up a menu which enables you to change the gain on this rotary fader here only specifically to that channel though so if you want to do, change multiple gains at the same time that's going to take some time pressing that on each channel so an important thing to note is if you press and hold down it brings all of the the gain sections turn to an orange colour and then these rotary faders here become your gain pots which enables you to access the gains of multiple channels at the same time so this will cut down severely on any sort of time that you would have previously taken going through the menu way so that's a nice nice thing to use when you're trying to set up quickly Okay, so as this video is about the use of this board as a monitor board, I'm not going to go too much into setting up of a session. I'm using a previous session in which the board was used as a monitor board um, to demonstrate some of the key workflow abilities that I think are important to know. So straight ahead, once you've set up your session as you would with any desk with all of your channels and the relevant I.O etc etc. One of the first things you're going to want to set up on this desk um, is aux to faders um, and the easiest way to enable this is to go into the menu and onto macros and then you, you are presented with a selection of macros on the left hand screen and, sl and dragging them up into the top bar enables you to select them when you go back out of the menu and then um, if once you've dragged aux to faders to the bar you can toggle it on and off so this is a really useful aspect of the desk which enables you to get to your mixes really quickly is within the channel strip you have each of your aux sends and then all you have to do is touch the relevant aux send and the uh, the orcs will light up purple across all of the channels and then that will enable you to edit the mix that you are sending to each aux so like I pull that fader down there the kick and that brings it out of the drum wedge and then I select the stage right wedge and they might want some of the kick there uh, it's, a, it's a very fluid mode of operation so that's quite handy to know. So the way that Digico have managed to keep this desk so compact is the introduction of layers. There's four different layers within this desk which gives you a lot of access to a lot of different channels. So there's ten different faders to each bank and then two banks to each layer. So that's 20 banks per layer and then you times that by the four layers that you have. So you've got 80 channels of whatever you would like to control and now how you manipulate that is you go into the console overview by pressing this button and it brings up all of the layers and all of the assigned channels to those layers and you have complete customization over that so you can really set up the desk to display anything that you would like anywhere and group 
inputs and auxes and control groups all together in in one bank to enable you to really customize the workflow to how you like to to run your monitor desk which is a really positive aspect of this desk another positive aspect of this desk is the spill set so pressing that button there will bring up the spill set on only on 10 faders but you can assign those 10 faders to anything and then that can be used on any layer so if there's something that you want control of no matter what layer you are on then you can assign it to your spill set and you'll be able to button it in and out with relative ease so for example on this desk there is a lack of mute groups so for this I've for my spill set I've set up the aux masters and then I'm able to mute the aux masters and so that's applied to my monitor mixes and my effects that I've got going back through the monitors which gives me control over the level. Another key function is the snapshot section. You can find this within the main menu and setting them up is relatively easy. You just insert a new snapshot every time you'd like something new. Um, or changed that you can easily button between using these buttons. So for example if you get a chance for some pre-production with a band and you know specific songs have quite drastic changes that you'd really like to nail down beforehand then you can create a snapshot of your original mix and then you can go to the next song which may have in, in, an introduction of something else or might have something that needs to be drastically EQ'd or they really need to change the feel of the mix but it really needs to be spot on and they're very particular then you can change it till you're happy with it and then save it as the next snapshot and then when it comes to that song in the gig all you have to do is press that and bam you're there into your next zone and it's completely as it was um, with the digital recall function which is really really helpful in that scenario so another thing that makes the S21 a great desk to operate monitors on is the inclusion of 16 32 band graphic EQs. Now you've only got 12 outputs on the desk so 16 may seem like an unnecessary number but Digico have intentionally done this because you can use this desk with external stage boxes for example like an SD rack that has 16 outputs and enable you to have a graphic EQ on each one of your 16 mixes that you may be doing from an SD rack. So it's showing their thought for, for this desk and trying to give it as much adaptability as possible which I think they've done really well. So the graphic EQ is really easy to use and you can access it via the main menu or like I've done for this session because you want to be able to get to it quickly so there's two button presses for the main menu and that's just grossly inappropriate so I've just grabbed it and put it in with my macros so you can just press it and the macros are always there no matter what layer you're on and it will bring up your graphic EQ so that's great and then all you have to do is select the relevant graphic EQ by pressing it and then your faders become your graph each band on the graphic EQ which is handy and then obviously you've only got 20 faders but you've got 32 bands of graphic EQ so the way that you switch between them is you just slide the faders across and then you get access to the higher and lower registers so let's have a look at the solo buses on the S21 the S21 features two solo buses. This gives you the ability to have two independent mixes, one for your headphones or your IEMs and two for your wedge monitor. So this enables you to listen to the performer's mix through the medium that the performer is also listening to it. For example, if you've got a singer who's on IEMs but your guitarist hates them, and has to have a wedge to be able to perform. This enables you to use Solo One to listen to the singer's mix through IEMs to accurately replicate what he's hearing and then it also gives you the opportunity to listen through Solo Two to your guitarist mix through the same wedge which will reduce the variations between the sound 
that you both hear. Obviously you won't be able to replicate it exactly because of all the external factors of the acoustics and the backline interaction and what whatever, but it's getting you as close as physically possible. So this is this is a valuable aspect of this desk. So when you're setting up your solo bus, you just select the input section and you've got input processing so if you want to delay them for whatever reason or high pass low pass filter them then you, that's perfectly possible you've got channel processing as well which is all of your EQ etc etc um, and then you have your direct out so this isn't assigned to a direct out because it's coming just out of the headphone port on the front of the desk um, one of the important things to set up is whether you're listening to a multi-solo bus or a single solo bus so this enables you to listen to more than one source at a time or restricts you to one source at a time so in this particular application I set my headphones to be able to listen to multiple sources because I'd like to listen to s sources in comparison with each other and to be able to check phase response etc etc whereas with my wedge monitor I just want to hear what this is coming out of a specific wedge on stage so I've set that to single so that when I solo one of the wedges I know I'm only hearing what is coming out of that wedge and I don't accidentally solo two wedges at the same time and then it just removes the margin of for error which is is quite handy when under high pressure situations so it's something that's quite good to set up So there we go, there's a little insight into the inner workings of the Digico S21. Hope that you found this video useful and you can take away some of the aspects that we've discussed and incorporate them into your own workflow and become a better monitor engineer as a result.